Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He's good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God, El Elyon El Che, the living God who loves you with a true agape love, a real love. He wants to pour it into your heart, write it on your mind, and keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stayed on Him. He wants to fill you with the knowledge of his will and give you wisdom and spiritual understanding. The knowledge of God is everything for us. He's called us to himself (laughs) and we are in him, in love. In him, in love. I'm never, never going to let that go because that is our roots. That's where we've grown up from. We grow up in the love that God has for us. A lot of people can say, I love, I love, I love you, Lord. And your love is important. But our love is born out of his love for us. Our love is born out of his love for us. When we see him, we can't help but be in complete awe of God. And that love is the, I believe it is the fear of the Lord. Because as you know him and you get to know him more, the more you want to stay right there where he is and you are completely in awe with the Lord and everything else you want to run away from. You want to get away from it because you, the only place you want to be is in this presence. There's nothing you can fear outside of you. When the true fear of everything that has ever existed is right there in God. Hmm? It's right there in the one that created all things for its purpose. For his purpose, sorry. He created all things. Seen yet not seen and heard yet not heard Everything that is seen and everything that is not seen has a purpose. And the Lord of hosts, the almighty God, El Shaddai, is over all of it. And he's given us a name above every name. Any name that can be named, whether it is seen in the earth or unseen in the earth. Anything working for us or working against us is under this name. Nothing can come against this name. And all of this he's given us his blood. And in all of this he's given us his word. In all of this he's given us his name. And if these apply to you, if this is in your heart and in your mind, you are triumphant and you can walk worthy of the calling that you've been called to. The Lord loves you with a true agape love. And this love is rooted in you. This love causes you to walk boldly in the face of your enemies. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When we really know the Lord God Almighty, no matter what we face, we're not moved from him. Yeah, I didn't say that you wouldn't get scared. Everybody has feelings and emotions. Jesus showed us shows us all of this. He shows us all of this on his way to the cross. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. It is heavy. It was more than he could bear. And he needed to get on his knees before the Father. He needed to lay out before the Father, the almighty God. And he did. It says in the, in the Bible that the angel strengthened him. He received strength for the journey ahead of him. Praise God. I thank you, Jesus, that we can look at him and we can get the strength we need. We need to know the author and finisher of our faith and keep understanding what he has done for us so that we're not wearied in our minds and we can get up and continue walking out our soul salvation will continue doing good works the lord is our life 
the Lord is our life. <laughs> everybody who, everybody and anybody who says yes to Christ belongs to Christ. And those who have not said yes to Christ will end up in an in a eternity of hell. You know, an eternity of fire, of sulfur. They're judged. They're outside of God. Then they'll go where God has said for that, that those who don't trust him, don't believe on him, don't lean on him, where they will go. He made the place, but he didn't make it for human beings. And that's why we ought to be more, more walking out our salvation in full view of those who don't know him. We need to walk worthy of our call in view, full view of those who don't know them, him, so that they will be transformed. They might say yes to God because of how we live our lives. This isn't fake. This is real love. Every <laughs> this is real love. This is, I woke up last night with these these words on my mind. Stop living your life like you are in the world. Start living it from above. Start living it from above. Because you know that we have been born. We are being born, have been born, and are being born from above. That's scripture. Our heart, our, our mind, will, and emotions may be in this earth and seeing it as the world and things transpire all around us. We see it as it is, but when you see it in the spirit, from where you rest in God, where you lean on him and rely on him, then you can walk out your salvation the way that it's supposed to be walked out. Hmm? You got full knowledge. You're not weary in your well-doing. You don't get tired in such a way that you move away from the Prince of Peace. I'm going to read a few excerpts that I found here that sum up what I'm what I'm saying today and one of them was from uh, what does from gotquestions.org walk worthy is a phrase used by Paul to encourage believers to live up to their calling and position in Christ it involves being fruitful increasing in knowledge enduring and giving thanks and the next one is from the same place, gotquestions.org. The word walk worthy is the idea, has, has the idea of matching up. Our actions should match our words or, and our outward presentation should match our inward convictions. To walk worthy of our calling means to live up to the calling, to live in such a way as to honor God as we complete his course of action for us. In Colossians 1, walking worthy is tied to four personal characteristics, being fruitful in every good work, steadily increasing in the knowledge of God, using power using the power of God to joyfully endure and patiently preserve and number four giving thanks to the Father for what he has done the commandment to walk worthy of our calling does not mean that we should we we are to somehow merit or earn our position rather Paul is exhorting believers to live their lives as to prove they belong to Christ. They are to maintain a fidelity to Christ and live with integrity. True believers will display the fruit of the Spirit who lives in them. Now that's very good. You're going to display the fruit of the Spirit of the one that lives in you. Their daily lives match their message 
the gospel. Their position in Christ and their character uh, and the character of Christ. They live their they, they live their religion, not merely con per confess it. We are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, and if we know Him, there are things that we are going to walk away from in our lives and not, you know, not let it snare us. You know, I know everybody's got their thing, and they they want to keep on fighting it. Well, let me tell you, the fight is over. When you know Christ and you know the love of God, the sin that used to be in your life can't have you the way it did when it, when you were a child. In fact, if you get entangled in it, it will get you worse. <laughs> it will get you worse. I want you to walk worthy today of your calling. Love others as Christ has loved you. Live in his love. It's not merely some outward action where we are just full of works. When you're alone, that love of God in you is working. And the character and the nature of God is working in you. The fruit of the Spirit seems to be about, I mean, everything and every place where we go. Whatever we're doing, the fruit is showing itself. God is proving himself in you because you have surrendered your mind, your will, your soul to God. I can come right back to Deuteronomy chapter 6 again, where it talks about love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your strength. Hmm? Love the Lord your God with all your spirit, soul, and body. Tie yourself to him. <laughs> Tie, cleave to God. Let the issues of your life be all laid on the floor before God. He'll take care of it. You, you know what you do with the issues of your heart? Apply the word of life to it. One, sit down with the Lord. Talk with him. He hears you. He hears you. He knows the cry. He knows the pain. He knows the hurt. You don't have to carry these as a burden. They will, they will snuff out the fruit that you need to bear in this earth. You need to bear the fruit of the Spirit in all situations, in all circumstances, at all times. And that does not mean that you're not emotional and all that other stuff that people like to say. It just means that when it's time to pray, we pray. And we take all of our concerns before the Lord. And if we need help, we can reach out to our brothers and sisters that are all around us. One or two, however. And they will pray for you. The right ones will intercede on your behalf. They will pray for you. Sometimes, I'll say it again, like I was saying before. The situations can be so intense and so great in our lives. That we can't think straight. And we need someone else to come along because we're too close to the situation. We need someone else to come along and pray what we can't pray. And it's okay. You're not carrying the burden alone. You have a mission in your life. And you cannot allow the enemy to come in and cut you off in your mission. There's things that play against us that work hard to deceive us so that we'll walk off in our feelings. But I'm telling you, I cast every care before the Lord and I trust him to work all things out together for my good. Rather, a door needs to be shut in my life or another door needs to be opened in my life. God has the power to do it all and I trust him. Don't walk in darkness. Hmm? Don't walk in your in the place where I don't understand, I don't get it, I don't understand. Take the care before the Lord because it will overcharge your system. You won't be able to walk in the Spirit. You won't be able to walk in the Spirit. I'd rather walk in the, in the Spirit and fulfill the will of God in my life. Because this isn't, this isn't a work. Not like, not like grueling, hard, grieving work. We're walking in love. 
And if we're walking in love, the fruit of the Spirit is going to show up in every occasion, in every instant. Instance. <laughs> the Lord is with you and in you and to you and through you. We belong to God. He's with you wherever you are, even when you don't feel Him. Yeah. Trust the Lord today. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will strengthen you and strengthen the inner man. Psalm 35 is sitting in front of me. Try reading that one. It looks like a good one. Take hold of shield and buckler. Stand up for mine help. Draw out also thy spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. You know, these prayers are here for a reason. Now we don't wish for anybody to die, but we sure need the enemy blinded and off our tracks. We need him off our tracks. I hope somebody understands what I'm saying. We need the Lord to plead our cause. And the only way the Lord is going to please our cause, and I mean this, I don't care what anybody thinks really, <laughs> is to get in Him. If we are the Lord's, we trust Him. And if we need help, we call on His name. Even when we don't need help, we call on His name. But when we need help, we call on His name. The Lord is with you. And you need to turn that that negative stuff that's coming into your soul, trying to turn you away from the presence of God, kind of trying to bring you into a place where you're uneasy and not at rest. You need to turn it over to the Lord. He sees the enemy. He knows the enemy. But he wants us who he has given power to. God has given us power over all the works of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means harm us. It won't hurt us because we are casting our care before the Lord. Jesus says, and, and what chapter is that? Luke. Well, I'll look it up. <laughs> chapter 10, I think. That are, we're not to rejoice over the works, you know, over the fact that we have the power to cast out the devil. We're to rejoice that our names are written in heaven. It's something that comes above everything else. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And we give glory to God. We honor Him above everything. This is why that power works so well against our enemies. Because we're submitted to God. When you're submitted to God with your heart, you, you don't want to lean on your own understanding. You want to cast every care before the Lord because you know He cares for you. You know that He's going to work it out for your good. If there's, is, if the, if the enemy is raising his head, if, if you feel this, the witchcraft and all this other stuff working against you, it is only for you to step into the authority that's been given to you by Christ. Don't let anything stop you from walking worthy of the calling. Know our Father. Know our Father. Know that Jesus shed his blood for you, bought you with the price of his own blood so that you could come into the house of God. You are surrounded. You have protection from angels. I mean, protection by angels. You have protection by the Almighty God, the Word of God being in you. The Holy Spirit reminding you of all truth. And if we lean on God and rest in Him, we're going to hear Him all that much more and walk worthy of our call. Because we're in the love of God. I'm saying this a different way. So that we understand the love that we're in. This love is your shield and surrounding shield. You came to know God by what He said. And what He said got in your heart. And it got written on your mind. Because you kept coming to him and drinking from this word. Now you know God's ways and you know the enemy's ways. Know your ways. Because when you know your ways, you will understand how you can be settled in God. Settled in Christ. And you won't be moved away from your hope. 
You won't walk away from the calling you've been called to. You'll stay right there in the midst of this love. The Lord loves you with a true agape love and he wants to ooh, <laughs> keep you from, from uh, that last day. You know, he wants to catch you up in the air with him. He wants to find faith in you when he comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Trust the Lord today with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. Understand that you can't walk worthy of your call if you won't step into his presence and know him for who he is. He'll show you who you are. He'll show you what you are. He'll strengthen you with strength because you believe him. Let's go all the way back to Hebrews chapter 11. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For those who come to him must believe that he is. God is not a floating cloud that passes by, but he's the one who created the world and all that there is in it. Gave us his son, gave us his spirit, put angels in charge of our lives to help us with our salvation. Won't we trust him today? Won't we lean on him and not our own understanding today? Won't we come so close to his perfect love for us that we're just right there? I, I love this saying, close enough to kiss. Psalm 2 says, kiss the son lest he be angry. We don't want to be carried away in God's wrath. Draw near to God because he loves you. And he will deliver you from all of your enemies and all of your fears. Anything that comes against the knowledge of God for your life, nothing shall by any means harm you because you are in Christ and you know that. This is the love of your life. Have peace, brothers and sisters. I love you. Stay in Christ. Walk worthy of your call. Bye-bye.